let's check out a visual proof of a math fact that everybody should know. Derek Jeter and David Justice were two big names in baseball in the mid-1990s. As part of their baseball stardom, they provided an example of an interesting and seemingly paradoxical mathematical idea. In 1995, Derek Jeter, who was a rookie, recorded a 250 batting average. That same year, David Justice hit slightly better, recording a 253 batting average. Then in 1996, Jeter hit 314 and Justice hit 321, a nice year overall for both. But something interesting happens when we look at the two year stretch and take the overall combined averages for those two years for each player. When we do that, we get that Jeter hit a combined average of 310, while Justice's combined average was only 270. Somewhat surprisingly, Justice was the better hitter by average in both 1995 and 1996 separately, but over the two year span, Jeter was the better hitter by average. How can this be? Things might make a bit more sense if we look at where the averages come from. Jeter went 12 for 48 in 1995 and 183 for 582 in 1996, while Justice went 104 for 411 in 1995 and 45 for 140 in 1996. So Jeter had far more attempts in 1996 when they both had better yearly averages. The discrepancy in the denominators can make a difference. This example is a special real-world case of a phenomenon called Simpson's Paradox. To see why this can happen, we assume that 0 is less than little a over little b, which is less than capital A over capital B, and that 0 is less than little c over little d, which is less than capital C over capital D. These two inequalities mean that the line connecting the origin to the point little b a has a smaller slope than the line connecting the origin to capital B a. Similarly, the line from the origin to the point little d c is less steep than the line from the origin to capital DC. But now we can think of these as vectors, and we see that the vector sum of little b a and little d c is little b plus d a plus c. Moreover, the sum of capital B a and capital D c is capital B plus d a plus c. But notice that in this case, the slope of the line connecting the origin to capital B plus d a plus c is less steep than the one connecting the origin to little b plus d a plus c as shown. This means that it's possible for little a plus c over b plus d to be greater than capital A plus c over b plus d, even though the individual pairs of fractions were bounded the other way. This is how we can get paradoxical seeming behavior. Here's one more example. Consider two different treatments for kidney stones as shown in the table. From this data, we see that treatment A is better for small stones and large stones separately. However, in the aggregate, treatment B is more effective. Can you see why this happens from the number of cases in each cell? Again, this phenomenon is known as Simpson's paradox. It actually isn't a paradox at all as the visual proof from Jersey Kochik shows. It is just a consequence of vector arithmetic and how it affects pooled proportions when denominators are varying sizes. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoy visual proofs like the one shown in this video, check out my channel where I have hundreds more.